Hello, my name is Karen Evans Joseph, and today I want to welcome you to my presentation on the company analysis for the Dunkin' Brands Group Incorporation. In this presentation, we'll start with an introduction, we'll give a brief history and talk what the company is all about. Then later on, we'll see the business processes, external environment, and finally conclude with a SWOT analysis for the company. So the company has its origin dating back to 1948 when Bill Rosenberg opened his first coffee shop and it was called the Open Keto. And um, in two years later, he decided to rename the company to Dunkin' Donuts, which was a name that was carried out by the company throughout the years. And in 2019, the company decided to rename and rebrand itself to Dunkin' Brands. Dunkin' Brands owns two brands, which is Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins. Dunkin' Donuts uh, serves hot and cold coffee and Baskin Robbins serves um, ice cream. So the mission statement for the company is that it aims to be the leading provider um, of a wide range of delicious beverages and baked products around the kingdom in a convenient and relaxed, friendly environment that ensures the highest level of quality products and best value for the money. And also they aim to provide their guests with elegant service and unforgettable experience to meet their expectations in every single visit. Also, the company has its vision statement and the vision for a Dunkin', Don Dunkin brand is that um, it always wants to be always the desired place for great coffee beverages and delicious complimentary donuts and bakery products to enjoy with family and friends and the company has main three products which are coffee donuts and ice cream Well, according to Michael Porter's value chain analysis, business processes contains two main activities, primary activities and secondary or supporting activities. So within the primary activities, there is marketing and sales and the Dunkin Group has been able to do a, quite some good marketing for their products. We can see that there, there was a Dunkin Donuts flavor radio back in 2012 for the, for the Seoul or Korea market where Dunkin per managed to um, build a device that released the coffee aroma every time the Dunkin Donuts ad advert, advert was played in the radio and this machine was built in public transports like the subways and buses. Also the Dunkin brand has, uh, uh, has the Dunkin Donuts Perks loyalty program and the Baskin Robbins a gift card. All of this helps to increase sales and promote the product. Also, we can see that their operations, um, operations within Dunkin Donuts, uh, Dunkin brand, include that the company has been able to establish 20 more more than 21,000 points of distribution for their products, and in over 60 countries, where 12,154 across the US and the other markets are internationally and also we can see that the company does the purchase activities and with the purchase activities there is inbound logistics and outbound logistics with the inbound logistics it includes all the activities that involves the purchase of raw materials and with the outbound logistics includes the distribution transportation and the final service for the product for the good or product. And lastly, the activities within the Dunkin' Donuts are, the Dunkin' brand <laughs> are the service. And with this, we can see that the company has been able to uh, build the next generation kiosk store, which uh, includes self-service for the coffee. And also uh, it provides a drive-through for the ones using the mobile app for the Dunkin' brands. Well, the supporting activities within the Dunkin' brands include 
human resource management, which is a strategic management of people in the Dunkin group, and also farm infrastructure. This includes the farms, restaurants, or stores, um, the transport systems like the trucks, and also technological development, which includes um, research and development within the Dunkin brands, and also the procurement services. Next, we're going to observe the external environment within the Dunking groups. And the external environment consists of transaction environment and contextual environment. Within the contextual environment, we're going to do a steepboard analysis or the personal analysis. And the factors within the steepboard analysis includes the social factors like the changes in lifestyles, new health and fitness trends. For example, we can see lately people have been more health conscious and this has affected the dunking brands. People tend to consume foods that are more nutritious and tend to consume less foods that are um, not nutritious like donuts and um, ice cream. So we can see also there are technological factors. In technological factors, this includes the new research and development and automation. And within the Dunkin group, we can see that the new product research and development is done in the headquarters in Canton, Massachusetts, where they have the test kitchen lab, they have the uh, quality assurance lab, and they also have the um, sensory lab. Also, we can see that the Duncan Group has been quite a pioneer in uh, technological development. They, in, in, in August 2012, the Duncan launched the uh, first Duncan Donuts mobile application. And later on in 2014, the Duncan Group launched the new Duncan Donuts Pack Lo Lo Royalty Program. And in 2016, the Duncan Group decided to launch the on to go um, mobile application pickup pick up for the ones who are the Duncan Donuts Pack, pack uh, loyalty, Royalty program customers and in 2018 the Dunkin Donuts acquired the perpetual license for for the software that was used to build this uh, Dunkin Donuts uh, mobile application so we can see that it is uh, quite uh, good in the technological factor also the next factor is economical where the factors like consumer discretionary spendings and um, fluctuation in the price of coffee and other raw materials can affect the Dunkin brands. Another one is the environmental factors where the Dunkin brand has been uh, has been really dragged in this factor in, in to the fact that in May 2020 the Dunkin brands decided to transition from the polystyrene a uh, form of caps to paper caps for environmental sustainability. Also, another factor is the political factor where issues like political stability, trade restrictions and tariff can affect the dunking groups. Um, the legal issues where we can see uh, factors like lawsuits, employees laws and data protection laws all affect the dunking groups. For example, in 2003, a former franchise in Quebec decided to sue Dunkin' Donuts for failing to promote the U.S. donut chain when it faced stiff competition from its uh, competitor, Tim Hortons. Also, we can see that in 2015, the New York uh, court decided to sue Dunkin' Group for failing to per, to um, to for failing to inform their customers of the ongoing 20, 2013 and 2015 data breaches um, within the application. So all of these factors can affect the Dunking Group. And also the ethical uh, factor includes how ethical are the coffee beans and corporate responsibility towards uh, the society. So we can see that the Dunking Groups has been questioned a lot about how ethical their coffee beans are because um, most of their coffee beans uh, packaging does it's it is not easy for people to trace so people are seeking for companies that are um, packing coffee beans which can be traced where they were originally produced for uh, things like safety and nutritional wise 
Also, we can see that other factor includes the demographic, um, understanding the demographic uh, and how they inter interact with their brand. And with the Dunkin Group, we can see that it has quite been failing in this uh, situation where in um, in 2012, it, dis it decided to uh, take their brand to India and they failed to analyze the demographic of India that Indians do not prefer the traditional American coffee culture and due to this, the brand uh, was thrown out of India. Um, it failed, uh, the business brand failed in India. The transactional environment um, includes the um, the one that involves stakeholders and the people in within the Dunkin' Brands business. So next, we're going to observe the market potential of the product, and we'll see using four factors: market size, market growth rate, profitability, and competition. So the market size, we can see that the Dunkin' Brand has over twenty-one thousand points of distribution in over 60 countries and the market value um, of, of about $7.3 billion. Also, the market growth rate, we can see that the Dunkin' Grants has been growing by 4.6 percentage in sales in 2019 compared to a 4.4 percentage in sales in 2018. And how profitable the brand is and the product is that the Dunkin' Group has five reporting segments for the revenues, the Dunkin' US, Dunkin' International, Baskin Robbins US, Baskin International, and the advertising fees um, of the US. Um, the the revenue sources for the Dunkin' brands includes reality income and franchise fees associated with franchising of their, of their brand and restaurants, the income they get from selling of the ice cream, the continuing advertising fees they charge from the franchise, uh, the, the um, fees for licensing their brands uh, or products, and also they get a uh, rental income from the sublease or uh, lease of the of the of the franchise uh, to the, the the to the franchise. So those are their main five primary sources. And for the five years consecutive, consecutively, the total revenue had grown, and it was as follows. In 2019, Dunkin' Brands had a revenue accounting to 1.37 billion. In 2018, 1.32 billion. In 2017, 1.27 billion. 1.24 billion in 2016, and 810 million in 2015. Here we can see the Dunkin' revenue from 2019 to 2015 based on their five sources of revenue. The fourth factor is competition and we can see that the Dunkin' brand product faces competition from companies like Burger King, 7-Eleven, Dairy Queen, Wendy's, Starbucks and Taco Bells just to mention a few. Finally, we're going to conclude the <laughs> presentation with a sort analysis where we observe the company's strength, weakness, opportunities and threats. The Dunkin' Brands Corporation strength includes the company's goodwill, the customer's loyalty, internationality and the variety of products. Also, the weakness of the company includes stiff competition, substantial indebtedness, poor relationship with the franchise and um, increased risk of privacy and data breaches. Um, the opportunities that the company can look upon are the expansion to developing countries like uh, uh, countries in Africa, um, the development of healthy menu, the ones that focus on good nutrition like the keto menu, vegetarian dishes and the like, um, better advance, advancements in technology and uh, the threats that the company faces is the occurrence of unexpected events like the coronavirus, which limits the company's uh, development and, and expansion, the uh, fluctuation in exchange rates, the increase in taxes and the changes in the trade laws. All of these can pose other threats to the company. Well, and here are my references. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. That's all I have for today. If you have any further questions, please don't forget to leave them in the email below. And yeah, that's all I have. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Servus.